Hey, it's Justin Harvey. Thanks for tuning in to the Anesthesia and Pain Management Success Podcast. With APM Success, we take a close look at important topics pertaining to business, practice management, personal finance, and careers for anesthesiologists and pain management physicians. We work hard to take your critical questions straight to the experts. Thanks for listening. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Anesthesia and Pain Management Success. I'm here live on site at the Aspen Conference. Hopefully, the audio quality is going to come through okay here. I'm joined by Dr. Patrick Buchanan, who's an interventional pain specialist in California. He is the co-host of the Pain Unfiltered podcast. He and I have interacted a bit on that podcast as I was a guest a few months ago. We're here together at the conference. Dr. Buchanan, how's it going so far? Good. Thanks, Justin, for having me. You know, what a great place to have a conference like this in the heart of Miami. You know, there's so many people here. I think we have over 2,000 attendants this year. Wow. I feel like it gets bigger and bigger every year. Not only that, there's attendees, there's doctors, there's industry, there's a lot of VCs here too. So I mean, I think the word's spreading and and it's been a great, great, great experience. I've really enjoyed and appreciated this conference because of the uh, collaboration between the various stakeholders in the pain space. You got the doctors and the industry and consultants and attorneys and the practice management courses here that are so valuable for private practitioners, as well as all the clinical stuff, which I know nothing about, but appreciate nonetheless. We're here to talk about personal brand. And Dr. Buchanan, you are someone who uh, has thought a lot about this, clearly intentionally, and you've made a lot of career decisions and professional decisions that have helped build your brand over time. So tell me a little bit about your career arc up to this point, and then why does brand matter to you? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Justin. So yeah, I started, um, I'm physical medicine rehabilitation trained uh, at Kessler in New Jersey. Did my pain fellowship at Loma Linda in California. I'm from Orange County originally, so I kind of made full circle over here. And uh, just started my practice in uh, Camarillo, California, called Spanish Hills Interventional Pain Specialist. And I've been there for seven years now, which is very rare. Normally after the first year, I think over 50% of the physicians change their practice. So I, I feel like I'm very fortunate where I am. I've had a lot of support from my practice and industry and my colleagues as well. So I'm just very thankful for where I am right now. And then tell me about like, what was your first experience or when, when the idea of professional brand first kind of like bounced off your brain, you're like, this is something I need to think about and invest time and effort in. Yeah, I think it was right after fellowship when I started going to these pain society meetings like Aspen and seeing these key opinion leaders up there, seeing, you know, how they partner with industry and that kind of collaboration. So I kind of, you know, I'm very passionate about neuromodulation, minimally invasive surgery. So I kind of wanted to move forward with that space. So looking at how to do that, I looked at some of the, you know, the players, so to speak, that, that were up at the top, like the Tim Deers, like the Dawa Syeds, like the Jason Popes, and try to gain as much information from them on how to do that, start that process. What were those early experiences like? Did you just like cold email them and say, hey, I want to, you know, have the kind of influence that you've built over time. What should I do? Or how did yeah, that unfold? A, that's a great question. So the first thing I did coming out of fellowship was to track my patient outcomes. I think that's very important for any position to do, regardless if they want to go into the industry side of it or not, is are these, you know, treatments that I'm using, do they back up um, in real world uh, data for this, for my patients? So that was the first thing. And I used some of this data to create abstracts and submit abstracts at these society meetings like Aspen and CalSIP at the time uh, and those. So fortunately, my abstract was nominated as the abstract of the year. And I was able to be on the podium at CalSIP there and talk about, at the time it was called multi-vendor trialing. So I would trial different stimulator companies during a trial. And at the end, the patient gets to decide which one they liked better. Now, at the time, I had no idea what the politics was in this industry in terms of, you know, the repercussions of it. So I got a, some love with the companies that did well and some not so much love for the companies that uh, didn't perform well. So. I guess that kind of opened up the doors to some of these meetings, good or bad. Yeah. But it also opened uh, kind of some of the ears to to like the Jason Popes, the Ramo Naidus out there, and also some of these execs as well. So that's kind of how I kind of got my foot in the door, so to speak. And then based on that, they helped me. I remember Jason Pope really helped me get on some of the uh, research side of things too, especially uh, sacroiliac joint fusion. 
uh, with pain, what pain tech was doing. He got me into that study. And kind of from there, I, I kind of grew. Medicine, and I think pain management in particular, has a lot of moral hazard associated with the practice of this specialty because of what you just described, the love. Because of the love that you can get from industry partners and because of the, uh, the both reputational and economic reward that comes from promoting certain products. And the way that you do that, the way that you interact with that moral hazard is very important for your brand. So talk a little bit about moral hazard and brand and interaction with industry and how you sort of walk that tightrope. That's a great point, Justin. So at first, you know, you're coming as a lowly resident, right? You're the bottom of the food chain. You're the bottom of the total pole, just eating the scraps and learning and training. No one tells you about any of this stuff. No one teaches you about industry partnerships or consulting or building your brand. No, you're worried about the next step, which is what fellowship am I getting? What job am I getting, right? So what contract am I getting? Which obviously you, you, you had a great addition to that and your expertise with a lot of the physicians in the society. So what you're doing is also a huge responsibility and help for this too. So, Thank you. but yeah, you're not, you're not worried about any of that other stuff, right? So when you get to some of these societies meetings and start making a name for yourself, you get all this attention, warranted or not, you're going to get a lot of attention because they see you, the industry sees you as trying to promote their brand and their, their product to try to influence other physicians. And, and so, so it's really important to kind of look at who you're partnering with and choose who you're partnering with early on in your career. So what I did is, no, number one is I had to use the product first, right? I had to believe in the product. I'm very selective with who I partner with. And everyone has their own algorithm and that kind of stuff. This is kind of speaking from my personal experience. So I basically, is this some product that I can use and actually help my patients, right? Number two is I look at the data, right? Do they have data to support this and how that, and how that drives their outcomes as well? And number three, the team. The team is super important from the top down. You know, the reps in our space, especially with spinal cord stimulation, they're representing me to my patients, right? They are, you know, if a patient has a bad experience with a rep or they're not there for them, that's going to look make, make me look bad and unprofessional. So I think reps play a crucial role in this as well. So, you know, the support has to be there and everything like that. And then the last thing would be, are they in it for the right reasons? Is industry in it for the right reasons, right? So investing time and money in research, in teaching, in education, in getting the codes there. So I think that's very important for, for this space as well. We talked a little bit about networking before we went live here. I made the observation, I think networking is one of the most sort of undertaught and underdeveloped necessary skills especially in pain management which is business oriented it has it's one of those specialties that is somewhat insult like you can still be a private practitioner you can still launch a pain practice it's very hard to go out and launch a i mean pick your specialty many of them unless they're like special special proceduralists types of specialties they uh, independent practice is disappearing left and right but networking is a really important part of that talk a little bit about your journey in like understanding the importance of networking and maybe some early efforts that you made and how you think about networking now as it relates to brands and as it relates to career development. Yeah, that's a great point, Justin. You know, I think networking, especially at these society meetings, is really important in, in building a band, making those connections with, like I said, not only industry, but the colleagues that you see and work with all the time, collaborating on publications. So, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to have some of my closest friends now, uh, Dr. David Lee, Dr. Jack Deep, collaborating and just picking their brains on what kind of the next th things are. So we have constantly um, talks and conversations. I'm going to plug our pain boys in there. Uh, we, we have a hashtag pain boys and all our stuff. Nice. Trying to create our brand that way too, actually. Started off as a joke, but it kind of caught fire. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we are on the same text chains talking about the different, you know, different therapies available and, and what's going on in the industry and that kind of stuff. So first of all, to have a close inner circle with networking on people that you can trust, people are there for you, looking at your best interests, giving their honest opinions, you know, not being two-faced and really supporting you. I think that's important to have in your circle. And, you know, Tim Deere has been a phenomenal example of that too, not only as a mentor, but someone who's always in your corner rooting for you and wanting to do, wanting you to succeed. 
So I think it starts from the top down as well. And so having Tim and Dawood and support you like that, I think it's really important. Were there any experiences for you, uh, like first networking efforts or conference experiences where you made a connection or two and it sort of solidified for you in your mind, wow, like this is a powerful tool, powerful practice and even a discipline, like it's a muscle. You gotta learn to be open to connections and to be a connector of others in order to like help a community like pain management. So tell me about like early experiences you had in that. Yeah, so one of the uh, examples, experiences I alluded to before was with pain tech and their sacred iliac joint fusion, close to your approach. Back five years ago, I remember at this conference even at the bar, one of the co-founders, Charles Gers, was there and I, I met him, shook his hand, he was great. He actually flew over to the West Coast, he's from Tampa, and actually trained me on this. So that's how, how far down pain tech was just starting out, right? And eventually I was the first implanter in California to implant a pain tech. But just seeing how far they come. Now you look at the meeting, there's like 40 different SI joint fusion companies, yeah. right? So being there and I give a lot of credit to pain tech. They've invested in research and education and they were kind of the first movers in this space too. They have a great board with Michael Enzing all the way down as well. And so getting in with them and partnering with them early and kind of being able to be one of the key opinion leaders in the space, uh, publishing different things like uh, how to successfully diagnose sacred iliac joints. Something as simple as that really kind of blew up in, on the publication side for me, which I, I didn't think it was going to. But then teaching these courses and talking and, and building up in my area, the Southern California area, going to dinners with these uh, physicians and APPs and talking about the therapy and then kind of trying to, not, I would say influence, but you know, guiding them on, on what I think personally is the best way to treat these patients who have sacred iliac joint pain. So I think partnering with a company that earlier on, publishing with them, doing research with them, and then able to, to speak for them and educate other uh, physicians on it really went, went a long way. So for anybody who's listening to this podcast and is like looking to maybe go to the fall ASRA meeting, the next pain comes, or the, you know, I think there's another like Aspen business meeting in, in uh, Nashville. Dr. Lee, I think is from that. Um, what, what do you, what would you recommend for somebody, one of these fellows who's like, all right, I'm ready to start throwing my emotional energy into doing all of the things that Dr. Buchanan is describing. Can you give a couple practical next steps for them at the next conference? Yeah, so again, like we mentioned, networking, talking to to us in this space, and we're definitely willing and open to help. But you have to do the work as well. We can only do so much, you know. We can talk, we can recommend things, we can talk about our own experiences, but at the end of the day, you have to put in the work. So if you're gonna do something, you gotta back that up with action. You know, through my experience, at least with some of these, you know, once you work with some of your colleagues, you truly get to know them good and bad, and collaborating with, you know, publications and articles and research studies and that kind of stuff, you very quickly can distinguish who wants to be in this and who truly takes it seriously and does this with their actions and who is a little more wishy-washy, doesn't really contribute, and you get stuck doing all the work. So I think you have to represent yourself early on to make a name for yourself is doing what you say you're going to do in a timely manner. I think that's the most basic way that I can, most basic, simplest advice I can give right now to someone trying to head out. And then based on that, you can kind of build that and back that up um, and start continue to build relationships and take it to the next level that way. Doing what you say you're going to do, ma making a promise and fulfilling that promise, that is one of those uh, age-old business concepts that will never go out of style because it continues to be kind of rare, especially over time. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Talk about the podcast. So you launched this podcast, Pain Unfiltered, with Doctors Deer and Sayed. How did that come about? How did you get involved? How's it going? What do you think about the podcasting life? Yeah, so I commute about 45 minutes to work a day. And so what do you do in the car, right? Listen to podcasts. Yep. And so I kind of, you know, enjoyed podcasts just from a listening standpoint. And I was invited to do a guest spot on a podcast for PSPS with Dr. Dan Orlovich. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, you know, I, I like the way it's a kind of conversation style. You can take a deeper dive into these things and gives another platform to be on. So 
When I was meeting with Tim Deer last year at a meeting, I told him I really wanted to get more involved in the Aspen Society because I really like what they're doing here. I really, you know, believe in what their, you know, their ethos is. So I went up to him and I started asking him, hey, Tim, what can I do to get more involved in the society? And he's like, well, what ideas do you have? Which I really didn't expect. I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should have told him. So I said, well, I was thinking about this podcast idea and taking a deeper dive in some of the, you know, crucial topics that we have in our society and getting the top execs and key opinion leaders on the podcast to really hash out some of this stuff, something you can't get at a conference lecture or in a 15 minute panel session. So he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. And to his credit, he kind of gave me full autonomy on it. He was super supportive. He has some connections that he helped to get some of the first guests on. But other than that, I kind of had to learn this myself. So talking about like doing what you said you were going to do was a little harder at first, challenging, but you know, stuff as just getting the right equipment together or where, you know, where she would, what platform to record on or how do you get this out into Spotify, um, iTunes, you know, YouTube. And then talking about, you know, how do you get sponsorships from these companies? What does the contract look like? The pricing, everything from that. Scheduling, scheduling these guests. Obviously, Tim's a very busy man. I think the hardest part of this podcast is getting <laughs> Tim's schedule. Because he is, I don't know how he does it, but he he's so busy. But he always finds time, obviously, for this podcast, which is great. But those are the challenges that you don't think about when you're, you know, submitting this idea. But um, honestly, I did it to get more involved in this society. I didn't really understand what the, the long-term potential of it was in terms of brand building. But when I look back on it, it's been quite fulfilling. Yeah, thanks to Dr. Deer. He was an early guest of the uh, Anesthesia and Pain Management Success Podcast, which I think at the time was the Anesthesia Success Podcast. I want to say it was episode 29 or something. So it was like over 200 episodes ago. I, uh, I've always been uh, grateful for his generosity of spirit and uh, coming on the show when I was, uh, you know, an outsider to the space and a, a finance guy, nonetheless, which, you know, money people are kind of dirty when you're in medicine. And understandably, that reputation is well earned by some of my colleagues, unfortunately. But uh, I have similarly found the podcast medium to it opens doors. It creates opportunities for collaboration, which you mentioned is an important networking mechanism. And it, it makes you smarter because I'm constantly talking to experts like you who have walked their journey and can share from their experience. I, uh, I'm totally, I love podcasting. So what's been your favorite part of the podcasting journey so far? Establishing those connections, getting to know people on a deeper level. And I feel like you have a bond. After you do a podcast with someone, you kind of have a bond with them. Yeah. And so every time you see them, you can talk about that. And obviously, and then giving back would be the last thing. You know, I'm very thankful for my mentors when they give me. So I want to give, you know, people that are the young innovators a platform to speak on too. So last year we had Dr. Melissa Murphy on. She's now the Innovator of the Year Award at Aspen, yeah. the Young Innovator of the Year. So like giving these young, you know, physicians that are amazing and have a huge future ahead of them kind of a platform to speak on and get their brand and get, get them out there so kind of giving back that way too well dr patrick buchanan thank you very much for joining us it's been a pleasure talking with you today on apm success my pleasure justin thanks for having me if you liked what you heard this week head on over to apmsuccess.com where you can find more content and free resources to help you build a successful career in anesthesia and pain management. If you wanted to leave a review in iTunes, I'd also really appreciate it. Thanks for using some of your valuable time to join me today on APM Success.